In this lesson, we'll revisit the subject of grouped selectors in CSS and see how we can use grouped selectors to selectively apply formatting to our HTML elements depending on the circumstance in which those elements are positioned inside our HTML document. Let's scroll down and look at our HTML code for the copy that we see on the page on the right-hand side of the screen. What I might like to do is change the appearance of elements when those elements are contained within other elements. I'm going to add another element to this page, so I have a few more things to modify. When I look at my HTML page, I can see that I have a heading 2 and a paragraph element here, which constitute these words, learn more, and the following sentence, which I'm highlighting in blue with my mouse. I'm going to quickly add an unordered list right after the word internet in my HTML, which we've seen in a previous lesson can be done by using the UL tag, which I'll close as soon as I create it so I don't forget. And within the UL tag, create list items such as nebula01 and another list item nebula02 and one more li nebula03 and if I save my page and refresh my browser we should see those unordered list items appear on our page. Now perhaps I might like my paragraph elements and my unordered list elements to have a little bit more space after them when and only when they're contained within the main content div. Let's take a look at how we could selectively apply that. Now when I switch back over to my HTML document and scroll back up, I can see that my grouped selectors are at the top of my HTML page. Now in this example it won't matter, but just to get into the habit of good coding, we mentioned earlier that HTML and CSS rules are read sequentially, meaning that rules encountered towards the end of your page are the last ones to be applied. So with my grouped selectors selected as they are right now, I'm going to cut them by using cut from the edit menu and scroll down and find my main content ID. I'm going to put my grouped selectors after my ID definitions because we're going to format instances of paragraphs and unordered lists that occur within the main content ID differently than they would be if they were encountered anywhere else, such as other layout regions which we'll create in future lessons. But to do this we're going to have a slight change in syntax. This time we're going to create a double selector as we've done before, but when I type main content as that first selector, I'm going to add the paragraph element after it, followed by a comma. Then I'm going to type my main content ID name again, followed by an unordered list selector, after which I'll type my open curly bracket, tab over a few times, and type a closing curly bracket. Now when I look at this, what this is telling the web browser to do is that for all instances of paragraph elements and unordered list elements that occur within the main content ID, do the following, which we haven't defined yet. But everything else on the page will be left untouched, such as our headings formatted with H1 and H2, and even though we don't have any yet, any other paragraphs or unordered lists that would occur on our page. But to see this contextual rule take effect, let's apply a property which we haven't seen yet but we're going to see quite a lot of in a future lesson as we explore the box model in CSS. And let's type padding-bottom. And let's assign 10 pixels of space. So what we should see when we refresh our page after we save our document is a little bit more space added after 
each sentence that's formatted with a paragraph element and after our unordered lists. So let's save our file and refresh our web browser. And sure enough, a little bit more space has been added after our paragraph elements and a little bit more space has been added after the third bullet point nebula which was previously flush up against the bottom of the page. And one last thing that I'll do to this page to correct something that's bothering me and is probably bothering you, when we look at the nebula bullet points, our unordered list, we don't have the same font and color applied to those words. And that's because this main content definition for paragraph selectors doesn't specify any formatting. But this isn't where we want to make that modification. If we scroll back up, we've seen inheritance bring formatting to elements in our page. We already have a rule that governs the formatting for paragraph elements. I just want that same formatting to apply to our own ordered list. So I'll turn this paragraph element into a grouped selector. I'll add a comma after the P and type UL. And because I want to keep my grouped selectors together, I'll select this range of CSS rules and cut them and come down and find my grouped selectors and I'll paste them. But I'll paste them before the group selectors we just created to selectively apply padding to our paragraph and unordered list items because I want the formatting for the color and the font of the text to be applied first and then a spacing adjustment to occur afterwards. So now if I save this file, switch over to my browser and refresh, now I can see that text looks the way that I want it to look and the spacing that we just applied is still preserved.